Kia ora, greetings. My name is Tahu Kukutai. I hail from the Ngāti Tipa, Ngāti Kinohaku and Te Opori tribes in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I am Professor of Demography at the University of Waikato and I'm a founding member of the Māori Data Sovereignty Network. Today I'm going to talk about Indigenous and specifically Māori perspectives on ancestry and genetic information. Um, drawing on some of the research from the Tikanga and Technology Research Program based here at the University of Waikato. So I'll start by noting that genealogical information is about far more than human ancestry. The collective genealogies that underpin Indigenous identity reach beyond ancestral lineage to include our creation and origin stories, our relationships with land, water, plants, animals, and cycles of nature, as well as the transmission of knowledge and protocols for ethical behavior. And with these connections come responsibilities to be good guardians of our information and knowledge, and to be good in good relations with each other and with our environments. For Māori, data and information is a taonga, that is, a prized resource that has both tangible and intangible value. Some data, such as ancestry and genetic data, are particularly valuable and sensitive and require active protection. Why? Because they literally define our collective identities and who we are as a people. Our research uh, suggests that the dominant privacy approaches are poorly placed to provide adequate protection for Indigenous ancestry and genetic data, in part because they apply an individualistic lens to data that are inherently collective. But we need that protection now more than ever. In an era of pervasive datafication and data colonialism, genealogical information is big business. Family history and genealogy is one of the most popular online activities. Ancestry.com has amassed over 11 billion ancestral profiles, and Ancestry DNA has more than 11 million entries in its consumer DNA database. Genealogical sites enable individuals and families to connect to each other and their wider communities, and of course that can bring positive outcomes. However, individual consent is a shaky foundation for sharing information about others, and the impact of data misuse can radiate out to affect others who never consented to participate. It also enables companies to profit from collectively owned information that they do not own. Let's consider the use of DNA in criminal investigations. Familial DNA searching has been used by law enforcement in various jurisdictions to search DNA databanks. Many of you will be familiar with high profile cases which have involved the use of public genetic genealogy databases to identify offenders. Here, uh, the New Zealand Police and our Government Forensics Agency, ESR, are trialling forensic investigative gene genetic genealogy tools to try and solve uh, so-called cold cases. To our team's knowledge, there has not been any consultation with Māori on the use of these tools, but the concerns raised by Māori communities are well known. In 2016, the Law Commission began a comprehensive review of the legislation governing the use of DNA in investigating crime. The Māori Data Sovereignty Network made a submission in which it argued, and I quote, Familial searching raises particular issues in relation to the balance of individual and collective rights given the disproportionate taking of biological samples from Māori and disproportionate inclusion of Māori in the forensic databanks and the relatively small size of the Māori population, familial searching will have differential impacts on Māori communities and individuals. It also noted that Indigenous peoples around the world have raised specific concerns around genetic samples and data for many years, including unethical practices, and it argued that any legislation that deals with bodily samples or DNA from Māori must include Māori rights to govern the samples collected and the data generated from them. The expansion of new technologies gives rise to other issues relating to ancestry information in ways that might not always be obvious. Take, for example, the use of facial recognition technology. Within Māori society, there has been a revival of traditional facial tattooing, and it is now commonplace to see Māori women with a moko kauai uh, tattoo on their chin and men with a full facial tattoo known as mata ora. These facial tattoos provide a really rich visual representation of an individual's ancestry, so it is highly sensitive from a cultural perspective, 
And our team has research, our research team has argued that such data is tapu or sacred and requires uh, additional protection over and above that typically afforded to biometric data. In both of these examples, there are fundamental and deeply embedded power imbalances and individual consent does not get us anywhere near close enough to rebalancing them. And I will end with that provocation. Kia ora, thank you.